Welcome. I'm Carl Frederick, and I will be interviewing individuals for Kenosha Voices, an oral history project of the Kenosha County Historical Society in conjunction with Kenosha Community Media. I have worked in newspapers for more than 40 years as an editor and a reporter. 38 and a half of those years were at the Kenosha News. I am also a member of the Kenosha County Historical Society Board. We hope you enjoy these programs. I'm speaking with Bob Schmidt, long time involved person with the county fair going back to his youth and, and long into his adult life. Thank you for talking with me today. It's a pleasure. Uh, what is your first recollection of the county fair? I think probably when I was a little boy, I went with to the fair with my dad who had a farm machinery uh, exhibit um, at the fair. Um, I would su suspect it was probably in the neighborhood of uh, the very late 40s, 1950s, right in that okay. neighborhood. Okay, and what do you remember the fair being like when you would attend it? My first memory of the fair is when it was totally on the Wilmot High School football field. And that football field was is today covered up by buildings, but the today to, to kind of locate it, uh, it would have been basically a, a brought, a, uh, directly across from the uh, fair office. Where the fair office is now is on a street, and that street on the south side of that street, um, there was the high school football field. And it was on that football field where the fair was uh, after it had, been, it had been reorganized after the Second World War. Um, there was um, tents where the livestock was in, um, the Ferris wheel and the merry-go-round and so on were over there, and um, the commercial exhibits, uh, the implement dealers from the county were there to show machinery um, and the car dealers from around the neighborhood were there to sell, show cars and um, some of the local businesses had exhibits in the tent. The um, 4-H and the um, homemakers, homemaker type exhibits were actually in the high school. And at the time, they were in part in the high school building, and then uh, at the time, the high school had a wooden structure, which is um, on the same side of the street, on the south side of the street there, but on the corner of where the high school was, which was their gymnasium. And so the 4-H used that as exhibits as well. Uh, so it was pretty much contained to high school property. Okay, and you, uh, as a youngster, uh, you were a member of 4-H? Yes. And did you make things to exhibit? Did, how did that work? Well, <clears throat> because I didn't live on a farm, I didn't have any livestock, but um, some of my projects over the years were uh, woodworking, gardening, um, uh, home improvement, which was like land, landscape improvement around the house, tractor maintenance. Um, those are the kind of things that I would um, participate in. And then you would show off your woodworking, show off the vegetables you tried to grow, mm -hmm. uh, and, and on things like tractor maintenance. Uh, as time went on, we would have uh, demonstrations that you'd stand up in front and give a 15 minute demonstrations on something. Uh, I remember one of my demonstrations was to show how a carburetor worked. Mm -hmm. And then there was that, um, as the fair grew, the 4-H tractor maintenance project became, uh, there was a tractor driver's contest. And, uh, so those are the kind of participations we did. Mm -hmm. And how long did you participate in 4-H? 
until I was 21 years old. At that time, that was the rule. You could be a 4-H member from the age of 10 to 21, and I was a member all those years. Okay. You said that the, the county fair was reorganized after World War II. How did that come about? My understanding from listening, because I don't remember any of this, but from, un from listening, <coughs> the county fair prior to the Second World War was held in various different areas. After the, after the war, uh, some of the local gentlemen got together and decided that they should have a fair. Um, and um, it was settled to have it at Wilmot, uh, using the Wilmot High School facilities to get started. Um, and one of the people that was interested was Martin, Marlon Schnur who was the uh, principal of the Wilmot High School. Okay. And he became the first fair manager. So I think there were five local men that got together and uh, each put in $25 to buy a life membership to start the fair. Um, there was um, uh, Marlon Schnur, um, Bob Van Leer, um, George Price, uh, Al Schmidt, and um, now I can't remember his name, but he <laughs> lived just west of Wilmot. Um, Roger Sherman. Okay. Those were the guys that kind of got were the spark plugs to get it going. Okay, and uh, that continued to grow. Uh, how did, let me, just tell me how the fair physically grew. Well, the fair grew, it was, it was a, a tent fair. It was all tents. There were no buildings at one time. And I think the first building they built was a little fair office. Um, they, no, maybe not. Um, it was in tents, on the, and then they moved to the south side of the street. Uh, and very early in the history, they, they arranged to purchase the farm that was on the north side of that street. And uh, everything moved north, uh, but the, the uh, livestock and the commercial and the food tents and all of that as they grew um, moved further north. When he needed more room, move further north. And uh, somewhere along the line, the fair bought that farm. And uh, there was a house pretty much where the fair office is now. Um, they built the fair office and they moved the house off of the fairgrounds. And the house is still standing and it's over on the same street, but on the, on the east side of Wilmot's Main Street. And then as time went on, they would build buildings, commercial buildings. Um, they actually moved that old uh, wooden structure from the high school over to the fairgrounds and used it for a few years. And then it became unusable and it got torn down. And then they built a, a Quonset building, I think was the first building. Uh, and it's still there being used as maintenance. And then commercial building and other buildings and started with uh, livestock when they moved across the creek. Um, there's a creek that runs right through the fairgrounds and, and uh, everything kept moving as the fair grew. Okay. Um, did it still use Wilmot High School at all? It did for many years. Okay. But <clears throat> as the Fair Association grew and was able to build buildings, um, for some of this uh, displays, uh, like the uh, education displays from the grade schools, um, the, the uh, display for the ladies or the homemakers group, um, and those kind of things, and the commercial building for the commercial displays uh, that pretty much moved out of the high school. And then the high school grew and the space was used up anyway, so. Where do they get the money to keep growing, money to buy a farm. I mean, they started with 
life memberships of five people. So how did it grow to be able to fund all this? Well, they did sell some, uh, quite a few life memberships, but um, basically it was have a fair, make a little money, spend it, mm -hmm. and keep going like that. Um, Kenosha County did participate, as I remember, in uh, some grants at the time. Um, and, um, but pretty much I think it was uh, have a fair, grow, <laughs> make some money, grow. And then they built a racetrack and the racetrack over the years has been very successful. Okay. Did they have a racetrack initially? There was a racetrack um, that I don't remember, but it was uh, west of the current fairgrounds, uh, approximately, I think, where the uh, campgrounds for the fair is now. There's a campground back um, to the west of the what we would think of as the fairgrounds for the people that want to exhibit and stay right there okay somewhere in that neighborhood okay south is the new fair uh racetrack okay so they built that how uh when did that new racetrack get built it's been there a long time um i don't know a date okay. but i would say it's been there 40 years, maybe okay. longer. Okay, and then you said that uh, you participated in 4-H, but you also went there with your dad. <clears throat> we always had an exhibit of farm equipment at the fair, as did the other farm equipment dealers in the county. Um, uh, today, we're the only farm equipment dealer in the county, but. At one time, there were 13 farm equipment dealers in Kenosha County. Hmm. And so, um, not all of them, but several of them would also display. Um, and the car companies, Hartnell Chevrolet would display, and, and uh, you know, Ford Garage in Salem, and, and other people would display. And yeah, we would go every year and have an exhibit at the fair. And then you would just hang out with your dad? I would hang out, and actually as time went on, I worked the, worked the exhibit. Along with him, or maybe someday in place of him? Both. Both? Yeah, he was always very interested. He was president of the association for many years. Okay, and uh, did you meet friends ever there? Did you? Oh yeah. Met friends. I met my wife there. <clears throat> how did how did that story come about? Well, <clears throat> Louise was Mr. Schnur's secretary at the high school, so in the summertime she would come over and work at the fairgrounds with him. And I knew she was there. And and one year, um, when I was about probably. 21 years old, 20 years old or so. My dad and I were sitting in the in the exhibit tent um, on the north end of the fairgrounds and and it was a Sunday evening and the crowd had slowed down and he said to me, he said, you know, there's a real nice looking lady in, working in the office up there. He said, you ought to go up and make acquaintance with her. So I did and asked her if she wanted to go for a piece of pie at the Methodist um, food stand. And she agreed, and so we went for, had a piece of pie, and um, about three years later, we were married. Okay, interesting. So, you exhibited with your dad, and then when you took over the business, did you continue to exhibit at the fair? Yes. We exhibited at the fair until probably, and I don't remember the date exactly, but about 2004 or 5, 6, something like that. And it became to the point where we were the only exhibitor in, in our trade. And um, most of the local commercial exhibitors have quit doing it. Mm -hmm. And um, the people that we wanted to reach by exhibiting at the fair uh, were not coming to the fair to look at equipment. They were coming into the fair to do 
um, other things like uh, observe the the livestock, the homemaker show, and frankly for entertainment, mm -hmm. you know, for the rodeos and the races and the different things that were going on. <clears throat> so it didn't prove to be very um, business-like. Okay, so as you uh, grew into adulthood, um, did you become more involved in the fair? I was quite involved, yes. Okay, and how involved, what were you involved with? Well, um, I became involved in the parade. Uh, the fair always had a very large parade, which they re did again this year, but had a very large parade that started on the, on the fairgrounds, um, went around the whole town of Wilmot, and then ended up on the fairgrounds again. It was participated in the, by the schools and businesses and the 4-H would make tent, make uh, floats and and uh, it was quite a parade, all the fire departments from the neighborhood and so on. And um, there was a, a lady in Wilmot, Grace Carey, who was the uh, very interested in the chairman of the, of the parade and uh, somehow or another I was elected to help her. And so she and I became friends and I helped her with the parade. And um, I ended up being chairman of the parade for a few years. And um, then somebody else took it over. And um, I kind of ended up with the tractor pull in the same way. Somebody was working on the tractor pull for several years. And, and um, one day at the shop, a couple, about a week before the, one of the years of the fair, uh, John Schnoor, who was the manager at the time, called me and he said, uh, he said the uh, tractor pull me uh, committee quit. Will you run the tractor pull? And I, I said to him, well, I don't know. I said, what's been done? You know, I said, ready to go? He said, nothing has been done. So I said, well, we'll work on it. So I gathered up two or three other guys that were interested in tractors and, and ended up being the tractor pull committee. How long did you do that? Oh, four or five years, I think. Did and you then, move on to something else after that? Um, well, I was always interested in the 4-H and um, um, because of the business, uh, exhibit there. That was primarily what I did at the fair. Uh, but um, those were the two big things that I did at the fair. But like I said, I did a lot help with odds and ends from the 4-H. I uh, did f whatever came up. Were your parents ever involved in the 4-H? My, yeah, my dad was a 4-H leader. In fact, he uh, was both the county and the state um, on the county and state board of directors for the fair, 4-H. My mother was a 4-H leader for years. Okay. My sister Arlene was very big in 4-H also. So was it, I mean it's called the Kenosha County Fair and does it focus on the areas west of I-94? Does it involve the city at all? Has it involved the city? Is it pretty much just the communities uh, west? It was <clears throat> and probably still is um, a western Kenosha County Fair. Um, the fair administration and the fair Everybody that's been involved in the leadership of the fair has for years and years um, really worked hard trying to get Kenosha involved. Um, and there has been some involvement from Kenosha. Um, WLIP has come out quite regularly. Kenosha News has come out somewhat. Um, but they never, it never has really got to the point where Kenosha was big in interest in the fair. 
Um, was there um, not much youth involvement to, to bring out to, to the fairgrounds, like you had 4-H out there? Was there not any kind of organization to get that interest in there? Well, apparently not in the city. Um, there was the, when Summers and Pleasant Prairie were uh, rural communities, there were 4-H clubs in both Summers and Pleasant Prairie. Um, I don't know if there are there now, because 4-H does have some programs that have nothing to do with the agriculture too. And mm -hmm. they, so they've developed that in the areas that are not uh, rural. But um, the uh, comments that I can remember is, is, is such a long ways to Walmart. Uh, so um, the fair has always tried to involve Kenosha uh, with limited success, I would say, and that's my personal opinion. Um, I don't want to get anybody else's opinion here, but that's my personal opinion. Okay, and um, say over the years, what would you say are the most popular aspects of the county fair? I think years ago the most popular was the uh, rural atmosphere um, and um, then there was always some sort of entertainment, uh, races, rodeos, things of that sort. As time has gone on there's been um, I think less and earlier too was in the commercial exhibits. I remember when we used to talk to a lot of people about machinery in, in our particular exhibit. And there were people in the, in the commercial building that were uh, local businesses. And uh, people would actually talk to them. Um, that has changed a lot now. But, and it, I think it has changed to become, uh, people like to look at the rural parts of it, the livestock, and the uh, homemakers programs and education program where they have their buildings and exhibits and uh, to a point get a little bit of connection with the agriculture but i would say that the majority of the people attending the fair are not necessarily agriculture anymore uh, a lot of them i think grew up on farms or in in rural communities but there's a lot of people that come to the fair now for the entertainment, the music and, and programs and races and rodeo and so on. So what are the staples then of today's county fair? You I have a demo derby, you have, you know, each night there's something going on. Yeah. What are the things that pretty much are there every year? Well, the tractor pulls, the combine derbies, the, the, the races, the derby, uh, the, the, the uh, demo derby, and so on. Um, and uh, in the last few years, they've developed a uh, following for some very good uh, music. There's, a, there's a, a tent, pretty nice tent, that uh, has some uh, very substantial music organizations that come and draw a lot of people. Um, I think a lot of times too that people like the fair food because there's a lot of fair food there. <laughs> and people still come for the for the 4-H and then you know and there's still a lot of people involved in those kind of things but um, there's not as much exhibit in the 4-H as there used to be and the commercial building is more um, um, gutter guards and politicians and more of those kind of things, I think. But fair attendance is growing. Fair attendance, fair attendance is growing and, and it, I think it reflects the fact that people still kind of like the idea that, that there's a little bit of agriculture around and they like to, you see people walking through the livestock built tents and the horse tents, uh, or they're not tents, buildings. Uh, and um, asking questions and so on. Um, but the majority of the, the um, 
draw seems to be the entertainment uh, items that are on the menu. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, there used to be some pretty substantial people involved with the fair even after the five who started it and the people who worked on the individual things such as yourself. Um, can you think of anybody else uh, that used to be real integral to the county fair from the uh, UW extension or anything like that? Well, um, Paul Yeager was very instrumental as a county agent in working with the um, 4-H and the homemakers and and uh, and Phyllis Northway and um, um, my memory is not there. Um, at one time, you know, we had a um, county agricultural agent and a 4-H club agent and a home age, homemaker agent and a crops person and they all were very instrumental in working with the fair and fair exhibits and creating this uh, uh, bond between this, the non-farm people and the farm people. Um, it, I think we've lost some of that. But yes, they were very instrumental. And today we have a very active board of directors that are working real hard to keep the county fair the county fair. And what do you mean by that, keeping it the county fair? Um, example, this year, even though there was no farm not much farm machinery exhibit there, I mean, we brought uh, some tractors that the fair used and also displayed, um, and another dealer did also, but um, some of the members of the board of directors who are farmers um, brought some of their machinery down and parked it around the fairgrounds. So there were some very large tractors and combines and so on there that people could could look at to uh, to uh, see what the farmers are using uh, to give it that rural atmosphere. So um, the fair board is working real hard to keep the fair uh, rural viable, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, trying to bo do both, to keep it rural and to appeal to the people who actually live in the community. Um, and, and we get a large uh, contingent of, of people coming to visit the fair from uh, Northern Lake County and, and McHenry County because we're so close to the Illinois line there. But there's a lot of people from that area that come up to go to the fair. Okay. Um, so how do you see the fair going into the future? Well, there will always be some agricultural um, in the northern part of the county, uh, in the western part of the county, beyond, you know, in Wheatland and Randall Township, and Paris and Brighton. Um, not much in Summers and Paris anymore, or, or Summers and, and uh, Pleasant Prairie, and uh, not even much left in Salem and in Bristol. It's, they're, they're, but there always will be, I think, in those other townships. And for that, I believe we'll have an agricultural contingent and an agricultural fair. But I also think that we will continue to see um, growth in the non-farm areas of the fair. Um, I think the ladies' building, um, which is a very large display that displays uh, photography and vegetables and, and uh, home, homemaker goods and cooking and so on, um, could very well be something that grows. Uh, uh, the education department. I think the non-farm areas will continue to prosper. Um, and um, I would say that with the, with the diligence of the board that, of directors that we have, um, it probably is going, I would think that it would continue to be uh, indicative of the community. Uh, and. Uh, but it's always going to be pretty rural, too. All right. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you.